Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and this time I talked about Hobo with a Shotgun, a new film that came out starring Rudger Hauer. It's uh, basically back in the day in 2007 for Grindhouse, uh, Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez had held a contest for someone to make a trailer, Grindhouse trailer. And uh, this guy who directed it, he made this film uh, trailer, Hobo with a Shotgun, Jason Eisner, and it won. And it got shown in festivals and um, actually along with uh, Grindhouse in certain places. And finally they decided to make a film with it. And I really enjoyed the film. The plot's fairly simple. Rudger Howard's a hobo, gets on a train, comes into town. The town is horribly overrun by all, all sorts of bad guys. Uh... The main big guy is this guy named Drake, and he has these two sons. Drake and his two sons are the bad part of the movie. Now, I don't, I don't put major spoilers. There's a lot of spoilers. Um, but I'll give you the general gist of it first. <clears throat> a lot of things, Roger Howard sees this. He tries to do the right thing. Um, he helps this girl who's a hooker. He makes the citizens arrest. The cops are corrupt. They actually scratch cut scum into his chest and throw him out. Um, one thing leads to another. He's in this place. Some bad guys go in. They, they even hold a gun to a baby, which I know is tasteless. But this is coming from a guy... There's some tasteless scenes, but I've seen a woman get the shit kicked out for 30 minutes and martyrs. I've seen a woman get the... Shit raped out of her for 30 minutes. Like I spit on your grave, the original. Or the remake. But the original is worse. I've seen a woman get her baby cut out of her womb and inside. I've seen a baby getting raped in a Serbian film. Granted, you didn't see... Yes, I did see the film. Once again, I did see it. And I wish I did. And granted, you don't see penetration. But I, you see enough of a guy raping a baby. Uh, I've seen it. Gutter balls... They take the guy who is a trainee slash a gay person, just because of that, they pull his dick out, he's dead, because he put a fucking one of those uh, bowling pins down his throat, they cut his dick off, they cut his dick this way, and open it up like a hot dog, and realistic offense. So I, this is done more tasteful. Anything, everything in this movie is done more tasteful than all that shit, so I've seen a lot worse. And as compared to Trauma, I can kind of see the difference, but I'm not a fan of Trauma. But I like this movie, so it's kind of an, it's like, it's an insult to compare this to Trauma. But if you're a fan of Trauma, that's fine. It's just not my cup of tea. But this one, Roger Howard really helps this film. He's the heart and soul to it. He's really care about his character. Uh, because, like, he's a guy who's trying to do the right thing. He doesn't know what's going on at first. He, he has a small dream. Like, he, he wants to get these 50 bucks and get this lawnmower to start a little uh, business. And, like, he he was going to BS his way to get the money by saying he needs it for his son, five-year-old son who lost his legs. But then he rips it up and he just tells the truth. I'm tired and I want a lawnmower. <laughs> I thought, okay, that was nice. He wasn't, he was being honest. You like this character. Um, but... I'm not going to tell every little scene, but at the end of the day, he has some money, he has to pick the shotgun, and he goes to town, the trailer didn't lie, like Machete, I mean Machete, Machete, I know they're fans of that movie, so I won't go into too much, I already said my piece on Machete, Robbie Rod, in my opinion, lied, the trailer said it was going to be about Danny Trejo, you know, not fucking with the wrong, not fucking with him, getting revenge, but a lot of it was... A message movie about the border, the border, the border. I'm sorry, I'm in Iowa. I can't do anything about the border. Even if it was the Canadian border, I couldn't do shit about that either. The only border I can do is the border between me and, you know, my house and the next house. Okay? You want to talk about that border? But I can't do anything about the Mexican border. I'm sorry. And Steven Seagal being such a prick that... No, you can't kill me. I'm gonna kill myself. Well, you go ahead. So, you know, your career died, so, but if you can't die, fine, your career died, so. 
more power to you. But anyway, backing off from this, just, I know there are a lot of fans of it, so that's cool. Hobo with a shotgun, though, um, he meets a, this hooker who he helps, because the, the girl's actually a good person. The actress who played her did a good job with it. I believe it's Molly, Molly someone, uh, you got a name. Molly Dunsworth, she did a good job. Uh, very likable. Um, so the hobo helps her, makes the citizens rest, they, like I said, puts stum on his chest, and she helps him out, um, and ultimately he has to, has the shotguns going to take care of the bad guys. Now, again, the movie didn't lie, it, it didn't throw some, I don't, I don't mind throwing a little message, but when you're really putting your face, like, putting it against the screen, do it, feel it, feel it! Marky Mark in his front, but feel it, feel it. Like, okay, I get the point. Here, it knows what it is. What struck me about this film was the violence was all practical effects. <clears throat> Granted, Expendables had CGI effects, but it had a lot more going for it for me. It made me look past it. Machete had CGI effects. This, though, did not. If it did, I'd never noticed it. Like, the bad guys, they're playing bumper cars, and this guy's in the middle, and they pop his head like a zit. Well, they have this guy put a manhole cover, and he falls through a hole, so the cover fits perfectly. They put a bar wire around his head and yank his head off. When Roger Howard with a shotgun, which, when Roger Howard has a shotgun, you know you have good times and a good movie, because Wanted Dead or Alive, Split Second, um, well, I don't, Split, I guess he didn't really have a shotgun Split Second, but Wanted Dead or Alive, The Hitcher, he has a shotgun, fun times. But Pratt's post Wibs. Um, Jason, uh, this guy did a really good job for his first film, I thought. Jesse Eisner. I hope he goes on and do more stuff. Jason Eisner, sorry, not Jesse. Jason Eisner. I hope he does well because he does more because the, like the action scenes, the, the editing is good. There's no shaky cam. It's not, you know, no, you know. Well, you know, with the action scenes, it's not, thankfully, it's not fucking shaky cam. Uh, the colors are vibrant. Like, I don't know why. It just the colors just really stuck out to me. Like, when it's green, it's green. When it's red, it's red. It's almost like a Dario Argento or Italian film. Maybe that's the point, because it's a Grand House film. But the colors just really struck out for me, which I really liked. Um... Later on in the film, you get these two thugs that's all in this armor, and when they talk, they have this demonized voice. It's like a really fucked up, heavy metal version of Iron Man. And they'll kill people in this hospital by wrapping something around them, rope, then shooting this harpoon thing, and then yanking them up and hanging them. Then they go to the next person and yank it, shoot them, and they hang up and they just walk away while the person gets hung up and choked to death. I'm like, oh shit. Um... But yeah, the, the score has a certain synthesizer at times, like a John Carpenter type vibe to it. So I, I enjoyed the score, the look of the film. Um, it's not too long, it's like 90 minutes, so it went at a good pace. It's not trying to... It's almost, You know, sometimes when they put message in these movies, like heavy-handed, it's almost like they're trying to piece credits. This doesn't do that, which I appreciate. It is what it is. Hold it with a shotgun, you know what you're getting in. You know, don't try to be artistic, you know, try to appease critics. Be what you are. This does it with great practical effects. Stellar performance by uh, Rudger Hauer. He really is the heart and soul of this movie. I agree with that. Um, one of my best friends, Afri, talked to me on Skype. He had seen this movie. He kind of felt the same way. And the two problems he had with the film was the problems I had. The villains are bad. Drake and his two sons are horrible acting, way too over the top, not in a good way. Also, the, the last shot, which I don't spoil it, I put major spoilers, but I don't spoil the ending. So for those who don't know, want to know, I'm going to put my hand up. Now, when I end the spoilers, I'm going to put my hand down. But starting the spoilers, on the ending, basically, he has the shotgun um, on the bad guy. The bad cops have the guns on, Roger Hour. And uh, the hooker got to get a couple of people and have the guns on the cops. Roger Howard, he knows what he has to do, so he blows the bad guy's head up. 
while the cops shoot him to death, and then the, everybody else shoot the cops, the bad cops to death. Rodriguez falls with a shotgun, and you hear the hooker screaming because the hooker, you know, liked him as a friend. And it passes the shotgun, then the movie ends. That was too abrupt. Too abrupt of an ending. I either would have liked to have seen Roger Howard live, or B, a little bit more to the ending, like a little bit more to his character, like this hooker, you know, cradling his body, or, you know, him giving last words to her. A little something like that. It was just too abrupt for me. And I would rather see Roger Howard live, but that's just my personal preference. But the end of spoilers. So, I just say the last shot of the ending, and the villains were the bad points, but uh, the Rudger Hauer, the, the vibrant color cinematography of it, the, the practical score, the hobo with a shotgun, Rudger Hauer gets to do a lot of damage, so to speak, a lot more than Danny Trail did in Machete. I'm sorry, it is. He did. Um, and he didn't have to have just a Beal training on a fucking Wii. Uh, but, other than the villains and the ending, um, I mean, you have some, quote, tasteless scenes, but, like, these bad guys get in the school bus and flamethrow it to piss people off to kill any hobos, because the hobo killed some of their men and stuff. Not some of their men, but, you know, killing people and they want to send a message. Tasteless idea, but I think it's handled responsibly in the fact that you just see the person their face and you see like the bus smoking up and you see a little bit of a kid but you, you barely see it you see it it's kind of masked by smoke I think it's done more responsibly than a Serbian film Gutter Balls Inside Martyrs Human Centipede even it is done more responsibly in this film I thought um, you see a baby getting raped, it changes your perspective. But, uh, you, oh, you don't see penetrate, whatever, that's another move. But, anyway, Hobo with a Shotgun, I enjoyed. If, if they fixed the ending, it made the villains more, less hammy, or more, less annoying, yeah, it would have been better. But other than that, I thought this was a pretty good first effort by the director. Um... And the movie, did, the trailer didn't lie. So, hold with a shotgun, I recommend. So, thanks for watching. If you're a Rudger Hauer fan, this is definitely one of his best performances. So, thanks for watching, and take care. Later.